Thank you for those kind words, uh, Uday Shankarji. Congratulations on a very, very successful, good year where you saw the transition from the virtual world to the physical world. And uh, despite all the tough times that you saw during your presidency, you've led from the front and uh, indeed delighted uh, to be a part of your program. You don't have to at all be grateful. I am a part of FIKI. I consider myself as a part of all of you. <laughs> And congratulations to you, Sanjeev ji. I wish you well for your tenure going forward. And given your leadership qualities, I have absolutely no doubt. Both Fiki is in safe, safe hands, the country is in safe hands. Because I'm very clear that uh, the very important role that all of you play, captains of industry and particularly those who devote time for institutions like Fiki, play a very, very important role acting as a bridge between government, between industry, between different stakeholders, and in some way be the voice of India across the world. So a big thank you to all the leaders of FIKI over the years, all the distinguished members of FIKI, and to all of you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have with us a number of former presidents of FIKI. And off and on we've been uh, working together on different projects. But I must acknowledge that particularly the Dubai Expo has been something which has been a matter of pride for all of India, for every Indian. And I would like to place on record my deep appreciation for the wonderful work that FIKI has done to make the Dubai Pavilion happen was a tough task right in the midst of COVID through the last two years fighting against all odds project getting delayed dates full of uncertainties visas full of challenges difficult person to deal with but with all of those uh, difficulties I think uh, we've come up with one of the best pavilions at the Dubai Expo 2020. It's one of the most uh, visible and highly visited pavilion, appreciated by all those who have had a chance to visit that, and compliments to the entire team for making it happen, making it happen successfully. And as I have indicated on earlier occasions, I'm hoping to kind of duplicate that experiment at the Pragati Medan in India, in Delhi so that we'll have a permanent location which can become a matter of pride for every Indian who visits uh, Delhi or goes to Pragati Medan. And the footfall at Pragati Medan is huge. So I would, in fact, it should become something where students are brought in from all over the country. They possibly come to Delhi, visit some of the wonderful uh, memorials here, maybe the National War Memorial, go to the Red Fort in its rejuvenated form, go to Pragati Medan, feel proud about India, and then maybe even go to Banaras and Ayodhya to experience the rejuvenation of our tradition, our heritage, our culture, our uh, ancient uh, wisdom. I'm surrounded by both Mumbaikars, so I think Mumbaikars have taken over the stage today from all the senior leadership of Fiki, which was traditionally Delhi. Save and except Mr. Newty, whom I see there from Kolkata. But I can see all the Delhi leaders of Fiki, so thank you for getting Fiki to Mumbai in such a big way. Friends, uh, lots can be said about what's happening, what can be done, what should be done. We are all very happy that uh, all of industry is doing reasonably well. We still have a few sectors under stress where we'll work together to get them back into action. We have concerns around uh, some sectors related to COVID which uh, do need to come up and uh, be supported in the coming days. But broadly, industry has really redeemed itself very well. And uh, even the figures uh, that were being mentioned 
Of course, uh, 400 billion looks to be a reality this year, which is almost a 40% growth over last year. We'll have uh, services exports also showing a 40% growth. But the important lesson from this uh, year for our international engagement has been that if we really make up our mind, if all of us put our heads together, if government and industry works in tandem, gets all our missions also on board, we start talking your language, walking the talk with you, things can be done. And uh, therefore, I, I do believe that what uh, Udeji just mentioned about aspiring for a trillion dollars of services and merchandise each by 2030 or so is possible. Let's not start calculating the numbers and the percentages. And I can assure you that Prime Minister Modi's government has never looked at incremental improvements or incremental growth. In every project that we've taken up, we've looked at saturating every possibility. So whether it was taking uh, toilets or cleanliness across the country, we saturated it to every home. Whether it was giving cooking gas connections, we saturated every home in the country. Whether it's electricity, everybody should get it. Healthcare has been taken up on a mission mode, 50 crore Indians getting free healthcare. Idea is how can we make it that every Indian gets healthcare facilities in, a, in an organized manner through technological support. And the list goes on and on. When we are looking at compliances, we felt we've done a great job, 22,000 compliances either reduced or totally eliminated in less than a year. Prime Minister was not happy. He said, this is just the beginning. Now let's go for some more. And he's put all of us back at the drawing board to look at what more can be done. Similarly, services, the way it has been growing over the last few years, to my mind it may be 150, 160 this year. But the pace of growth can really be accelerated. And the world looks upon India as a trusted partner today, particularly for what we did during the COVID period. All through COVID, India met all the international commitments Indian industry or business had made to the T. And the world today realizes that they can bank on you. They can surely have the confidence that if they give a contract to an Indian company, it will be met. And I think that's a great uh, achievement of Indian industry. And I'm sure that will hold us in good stead in the years to come. It's been appreciated by international world leaders at the G20. It's been appreciated by trade ministers from across the world at different fora where we interact or in meetings that I've had with them. And all in all, I think through the COVID period, Indian industry has truly demonstrated its unique capabilities to accept challenges. I mean, the fact that where we started March of 2020, one of at best four testing centers, two and a half thousand tests a day, almost no PPEs manufactured in India, no testing kits manufactured in India, obviously no vaccine for that uh, illness, a shortage of ICU beds, oxygen, medicines, the, the whole gamut of problems was immense. But as the Prime Minister often says that while we may have a billion problems, we have a billion minds and billion people to find solutions to those problems. And that is what India demonstrated during COVID. I'm very confident that the aggressive targets that we set, whether for international trade, whether for the future economic growth in the country, our ideas at 75 or resolve at 75 or India at 100 when we complete 100 years of independence in 2047. All of these are food for thought for each one of us for what we can do to contribute and what lessons we need to take for the future. And clearly, the kind of governance model that we are trying to propagate, that we are trying to promote in the country, focused on the highest level of integrity, focused on minimum government, maximum governance, 
focus on making life easy for our common citizens, making businesses easy to work in. The fact that the government is willing to listen to new ideas, engage with industry at every level, and work truly as an enabler, as a facilitator, as a partner with all of you. I am sure that the country has good times ahead of us. India 2047 should be a transformative change from our current thinking. We have to set very, very aggressive and accelerated goals, just like we do for different social projects. I think business and industry will also have to look at extremely large targets and big confidence into the future. And in that, the youth of India are startups. Many of your children are also engaged with startups. They've done us proud. And I think we'll soon have Falguni Nair here, if I'm not mistaken. You just had Falguni. I mean, it's, it's remarkable, the success story for a lady who starts at 50 almost. Right? We usually associate this with youth and youthful energy and youthful enthusiasm. Believe me, all of us have an opportunity and I think she epitomizes the strength of the Indian entrepreneur and the Indian entrepreneurial ability. And we are very proud of our achievements. We believe all of us can start looking at these big picture ideas, big picture opportunities. The world is looking at us. We should not fail Indians, India and the world. And to my mind, on our part, we are trying our best to get things organized in a way that more opportunities open up for you. At the industry ministry, there's significant engagement. They just spoke about the scale committee, which ultimately resulted in several steps being taken, both in policy and the PLI schemes that came out finally for many sectors. The large package for promoting semiconductor industry in India announced on Wednesday 76,000 crores in addition to whatever was already approved earlier, nearly 200,000 crores. So all in all, we are looking at about $40 billion being given out to industry to help promote new industry. And the Commerce Ministry working at, at the time on almost six FTAs and maybe one or two more may get added in the next few days. We are looking at getting opportunities for our Indian industry, Indian business, and I have no doubt that all of these will give us a huge leg up, both in international trade, will give us a big leg up in India, because with economies of scale, when we produce to larger levels, we'll be able to bring down the costs and improve the quality of our products sold within the country also. And between commerce and industry, the coordination or collaboration today is so immense. In fact, tomorrow I will be in Mumbai engaging with exporters and Indian uh, retail industry to examine what are the benefits the UAE FTA can give us. Along with that, we are looking at other engagements with the UAE which will be announced shortly, but we are still working to see whether we can have something like a large India Mart in uh, Dubai, where a uh, huge number of stores can come up to display Indian products, huge amount of warehousing can be picked up at affordable prices, and that can become a base to spread our wings all across Africa, Middle East, and other parts of the world. So we are looking at new ideas. Uh, along with the FTA with UAE, we are also simultaneously in discussion with Australia at an advanced stage. UK will launch possibly next month. Canada we may launch by about March or April or thereabouts. The EU has already been launched. We'll start getting down onto the drawing board now. Uh, we've launched with Israel. So a lot of things happening. Now all the GCC countries have approached us to start negotiations on behalf of the entire GCC grouping, opportunities will come in a big way. We will have to be more ambitious. We will have to look at 
grasping these opportunities. Since I'm also looking after textiles, I would urge friends who are from that sector to look at textiles in a big way. There's a huge market opportunity out there. A trillion dollar opportunity waiting for us in the world market. We've just not touched the tip of the iceberg. Technical textiles, man-made fibers, the potential is tremendous. Almost two-thirds of that market is in those sectors. It's the largest job-creating sector in India, textiles, after farming. So in some sense, we'll all have to put our heads together, see what more can be done on the textile side also. And I believe that 2047 should be that benchmark here for each one of us to set very, very ambitious goals, break the barriers of the traditional thinking on, on many ways. It, it, it's something which, which can only be done when we all come down together and decide that we are not going to be restricted in our imagination by the past. Let's unshackle from the past, go forward with great confidence, and the world is our stage, and the world is waiting for each one of you. My best wishes to each one of you in your businesses, in your personal and professional life. I wish Vicky well, I wish you well, Sanjeev, in the year ahead of you. I know we'll uh, see a lot more of you in Delhi, I hope now, uh, to the detriment of Unilever, but for the benefit of uh, government and the industry and the people of India, I wish you all success in your tenure, and God bless all of you and your families. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.